Okay, hi everybody. I'm Ina, Doug, Ina, something, whatever. Anyway, I said I would do one of these drunk history things. So let's do it. I haven't had too much. I'm in the attic. I couldn't find a chair, which is probably for the best. So I'm going to tell you guys about that thing I was posting on like a few weeks ago called Spartacus Week. No, it's not the cool TV show, you know, with the guys, you know, and the, and the one who replaced the other guy who died. No, it's 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 not about the the Roman guy. This ale's better than the brand. No, no, it's about it's about it's about it's about Germany, in um, um, 1919. From uh, fe no, no J January January fifth through the twelfth, when the newly formed German Communist Party was went into like a uprising and 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 stuff. <sighs> anyway, they kind of that that kind of happened, and it was you know it was very important. So anyway, so Germany was like very important country at the time. See, in 1914 there was that World War One, you know, where, uh, long story short, you got like 10 million soldiers die to determine which colonies are going to be enslaved by which uh, imperialist bunch of jackals. <clears throat> Germany loses. They, they don't get any colonies. So they don't get any colonies. Russia loses too, and they get communism. That's fucking awesome, because communism is the solution to to things like capitalism. Anyway, anyway. so there there were during the war there were people who didn't like the war, and like people like Karl Liebknecht, Rosa Luxemburg. Clara Zetkin, um, yeah, and they they for, they were part of this anti-war group called the Spartacus Bund, which was part of a breakaway from the German Social Democrat Party called the United Social Democrat, no, no the Independent Social Democratic Party, whatever. They they they, they ultimately suck, well, kind of, but. That takes us beyond what we're talking about. And... Oh, man. So anyway, anyway. The, um... The, uh... So they're opposed to the war, because the official German Social Democratic Party, even though during, like, before the war, they were part of something called the Second International. There was a first. Kind of wrote a book that dealt with them. And, um... Anyway, the, the, the Second International, they, they had all these resolutions and things put forward by people like Rosa Luxemburg and, you know, and Lenin, and, and yeah, I think Trotsky probably did something too, you know, when he wasn't playing Menshevik or whatever, or doing all that journalism, but, and they, they condemned the war, they said, we, if they ever have a war, we should have a general strike and a revolution and get rid of capitalism. So 1914, the, the Social Democrats didn't do that. They voted for the war. And that was a big betrayal because they're fucking assholes and revisionist pieces of shit. And, um, yeah. So they had no problem with the war. They had a problem once the war kind of went on. And German workers got radicalized, soldiers got radicalized, you had the revolution in Russia, and it's very clear, especially after the U.S. enters the war, that Germany's going to lose the war, because Germany's like the size of Colorado, it's not that fucking big. So anyway, in 1918, Germany loses the war, you see, and um, they... Uh, the workers, the soldiers, the sailors, they rise up, they establish workers' councils, 
modeled on a lot of them are modeled on the on the the Soviets, you know, that are in Russia, you know, instruments of popular power. And um Brandy sucks. But <laughs> it's actually not <laughs> it's not funny. But man but man, yeah. Okay, back to my story. So you no know, the the Kaiser who's like the German king or emperor, just some piece of shit who's in, in charge, because all emperors and kings suck, gets overthrown, and he's gone. He goes, he goes away. <laughs> Should have got guillotined, but he didn't. France knew how to deal with them, them fuckers. So there's a revolution, and there's, there's uh, initially it's like, are we going to have a, just a republic, but basically everything else stays the same, still capitalism and all that shit. Or we're gonna have a socialist republic, which a lot of people want, like Karl Lie uh, Liebknecht and Rosa Luxemburg, who were in prison. Now they're out, and um, that they get out. It's a big deal. So you have the leaders of the German Social Democrat Party, who, like Ebert and Scheidman, whatever the fuck his name is, and this other asshole named Nosk. And they don't want a revolution in Germany. They, they, they just want, like, this is it. This is where we get off. So they call up the army. People like Ludendorff. <laughs> Dorf. <laughs> Dorf. <laughs> it's like some guy out of Star Trek. Or... No, okay, all right, all right. Anyway, Ludendorff, and they say, dude, we don't want Bolshevism here. We'll work with you guys. So they start forming stuff called Fry Corps, or they help form them. They're a bunch of demobilized soldiers and filled with nationalists and soon-to-be Nazis. They're essentially going to, they're just death squads. They're bad. So the social, and, and the social democrats, yeah, they, they, um, I gotta stand up. So they, um, they form the, uh, the Fry Corps, and a lot of them get elected to these powerful positions in the councils and in the New Republic. Like, the New Republic's in Star Wars, you know, the expanding universe, which is a fucking Disney's gonna get rid of because they're douchebags. But anyway, 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 so, um, the, uh, So the Fry Corps are, um, they're going to do that shit. So the Social Democrats, they want to put a break on this revolution. People like the Spartacus, not like the shit ones in the U.S. who like Nambla, because they're freaking psycho, but the real cool Spartacus, you know, like Luxembourg and Liebknecht, they want to go all the way. They want, they want a, a Soviet Germany. So... There's question over, like, what type of new government we're going to have. Do we have a constituent assembly, a national assembly? Do we participate in elections? That is coming very clear to, like, a lot of the radicals that the, the social democrats are, kind of, are not really going to push the whole way. And a lot of the independent social democrats that they're kind of, they're kind of uh, wishy-washy. They're, they're not really quite as revolutionary. And there's clashes with like government troops and, and the revolutionaries in, in Germany throughout November and December. Pushbacks on things like workers' control. And. <clears throat> no, no, that's, that's bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad when shit like that happens. Anyway. anyway. So, um. Uh, Damn, I can't hold my liquor. That brandy sucks. Let's have some more. Bottoms up. <coughs> so, that shit happens.
Alright, so, my... Man, Brandy really sucks. Um, yeah, so, um, this is a clash it's in Germany, and people like Luxembourg and Liebknecht, they realize, you know, we can't, we need our own organization. We need to struggle for power. We have the example of, of that place. Russia, Russia, with Lenin and Trotsky and them, and the Communist Party of Russia. So, at the end of 1918, they formed their own organization called the German, the Communist Party of Germany, Spartacus. And it's a new party, it's real, they're really eager for action, they want to take power in the streets. Luxembourg's kind of a little iffy on this type of stuff. It's like, no, we got to build up some experience. We, we're too small. We don't have a national infrastructure. Liebknecht's kind of like, you know, we got a chance. So as, soon, uh, hold on. as soon as we get a chance, we got to take it. And, um, yeah. So, he, so there's kind of that. And the government essentially provokes what becomes the Spartacus uprising. Well, they dismissed like a radical police chief in uh, Berlin, and the workers just t seize key points like the Social Democrat paper, um, police stations, they set up barricades. Karl Liebknecht throws himself into this. Rosa Luxemburg, La Luxemburg is more hesitant. She's not quite, but out of a sense of honor duty she kind of does she thinks they're gonna lose which ends up being the case in retrospect we can see she's right but Liebnex you know he didn't have the benefit of hindsight so he did the thing and he he, he um he fought he you know part of the upper so anyway that asshole Nosk in the Fry Corps the Free Corps the proto-Nazi death squads the Social Democrats eventually send them in, and they crush the uprising after about a week. So, um, the, uh, and they, they capture Rosa Luxemburg and Liebknecht, and they shoot them in the back of the head. And here's the thing, you know, alright, there's the whole debate that happens over like the depression and like the rise of Nazis like should the German communists have allied to the social democrats well you know what and because I'm drunk the fucking social democrats are fucking social democrats they had no fucking problem with violence when it was used to determine who's gonna enslave what colonies they had no problem with that shit or legality when they vote for a war but they have a problem with workers striking and wanting to seize power, you know, doing the stuff like that they had preached like a few years before. And they have a problem with that. They, and they have no problem shooting these people. Because you know what? They're a bunch of fucking social fascists. You know? If anyone deserves that label, it's a fucking Nosk and Eberg. All these fuckers. You know? They were pieces of shit. And they fucking derailed a revolution that could have prevented Hitler, changed history, ended the Soviet isolation. You know, they're fucking social... F Who organizes death squads but fascists in the U.S. government? And Britain and Ireland and those places. Okay, a lot of people do that. But... These, you know, they're ostensibly socialists, and they're doing it. And they fucking kill the leaders of the German Communist Party. They kill revolutionary workers. And, they, you know, they do it in other places throughout Germany during that year. <clears throat> it's not the brand, it's just the ale. Uh, but... Fucking suck. You know, it's like social democracy sucks. I mean, who gives these people the time of fucking day? You know, I don't want to go on an Obama rant, but they suck too. They're fucking assholes.
Those social democrat pieces of shit. Okay, doesn't mean all the social democrats were necessarily fascists. You know, we can argue, that's a different debate over the, you know, United Front and the popular people's United Front against Judea. No, no, it's of Judea. Yeah, it's like Judea, popular front, and, and, um, what was I saying? Yeah, yeah, so, social fascism, you know, it's the, they're twins. That's what Stalin said. I don't know why I'm talking about Stalin, but he was hot when he was young, you got to admit. If nothing else, he was hot when he was a guy who was young. And I'm straight, and I, I got no problem with that. So that's, that's you know, Stalin and, and shit. So, yeah, these fucking social... Democrats, they put down the, the revolution. And, you know, Germany could have had its moment. They had, they're also the Munich Soviet and Eugene Levine and you know, all of that. Now they're fighting in Berlin. And it sucked because, you know, Germany didn't have a revolution. They had that stupid Weimar Republic that got replaced with Nazis. And, dude. I mean, seriously, it's like, so <sighs> Nazis are not socialists. They're a bunch of capitalist, warmongering pieces of shit. <clears throat> oh, I'm being racist and assholes. And every one of them deserved exactly what they got. The ones who died, I mean. You know, not the ones who lived and went to Argentina or wherever they went. Uh, but, yeah. So, yeah, Germany, and, you know, if Germany had the revolution, Russia would have had its aid. You probably could have seen, you know, other revolutions throughout 1919 get help from Germany and Russia, like Hungary and Slovakia, maybe Italy, or that other place, you know. It would have been interesting, but it didn't happen, and Russia had to go it alone, and... All the consequences of that, you know, I don't want to talk about socialism in one country because I want socialism in one country right now. I mean, like, especially if it's this one. That would be awesome. Socialism here, you know? Dude, I mean, you see that J. Edgar Hoover cartoon? It's like, USSA, Chris Christie gives you jobs. I mean, man, the guy, you know, he's, he's doing that bridge shit. And he could be given jobs. Oh man, Chris Christie giving jobs in the USSA. So, I, I, I'll stop one second. Just, oh shit. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, yeah, in Germany, they could have had, in the 1920s, there was the Cap Putsch. There was also the Red Army, the Roar. There was 1923, where uh, the Comintern kind of fucked up. <sighs> or more the, whatever. They didn't have a revolution, let's just say. The German Communist Party, they tried. Oh, the March action, that was fucked up. Paul Levy was right, if you read his shit on that. That's good shit. Good shit, Paul Levy. Thank you, Historical Materialism book series from A Market, for, for that shit. I mean, the guy kind of went douchebaggery after it, but he was right about the March action. You know, fuck up. I think kind of Lenin, they should have kept Paul Levy in there. Blandler was kind of a douchebag. You're like, ew, let's, let's be very cautious and not try shit. Because Brandler was kind of, kind of like that. Just like a metal worker or something. So anyway, okay, conclusion, that's Spartacus week. German Social Democrats are assholes. Rosa Luxemburg called Liebknecht are awesome. They could have had a revolution in 1919. And this is Drunk History brought to you by Ina. Drunk.
turning off my camera.